The New York Yankees are World Series champions for the 27th time in their illustrious history. They win game six by a final of seven to three. Joining me are AP baseball writers Ron Blum and Ben Walker. And Ron, what was the turning point in this six game series? For me, the turning point was back in game three in Philadelphia. Cole Hamels was breezing along, and then suddenly in the fourth inning, Alex Rodriguez hits an opposite field shot down the right field line, originally called a double, but after the first video review in World Series history, umps discovered it hit a camera hanging over the fence, and it became a two-run homer. From there, the Yankees spurted, and they really didn't look back much, taking the 3-1 series lead. I'm also going to nominate Alex Rodriguez, but I'm going to say it was his go-ahead double in the ninth inning of game four. The Phillies had rallied back. They had tied the game. Brad Lidge came in, got the first two hitters in the ninth. Johnny Damon with an incredible double steal. Who's ever seen it before? And then all of a sudden, Alex Rodriguez gets the hit he's been waiting for his whole life. Yankees go ahead to win and take a 3-1 lead. And Hideki Matsui, the first Japanese-born MVP of a World Series. Uh, I guess it was kind of up for grabs until Game 6, but he uh, punctuates uh, the MVP with uh, the 6 RBI performance. There's no doubt. In fact, here at the AP, we had four or five stories ready to go on who might be the MVP, including Chase Utley with his five home runs. Derek Jeter, Jeter hits over 400, always in contention. Mariana Rivera closing, Andy Pettit winning twice. But Hideki Matsui got eight hits. They were all big hits, three home runs, wins the award. And in game six, he really was a one-man gang against Pedro Martinez. Two-run homer, then another two-run hit. He was 9 for 19 against Pedro in the postseason. Strangely, during the regular season, he's a 143 career hitter against Martinez. And one has to wonder if Johnny Damon doesn't strain the calf here in game six, you know, what he would have done. He could have been the MVP of this series. Surely uh, he had a great series, really, uh, from number two. Two hole providing a lot of spark at the top of the Yankee batting order, making up a lot for the absence of Mark Teixeira, who had a terrible series. And interestingly, both uh, Matsui and Damon are eligible for free agency. Both might not be back. Alex Rodriguez uh, has a decent series. He slumped uh, at times in the series, but had some big hits. Is the monkey finally off A-Rod's back? I would say so. He had an 0 for 8 start with six strikeouts, but then he wound up uh, hitting, I think, 250 in the series. He had 18 RBIs in the postseason, a Yankee team record, six home runs, and most importantly, for the first time in his 16 season major league career, he's a champion. And after a season that started with steroid admissions, hip surgery, really he was in disgrace and in tatters. He winds up a winner, and his reputation in the eyes of many has changed. I would say, and certainly that image of him going off the field, hoisting that trophy, he's holding it like he would never want to give it up. I would say Alex Rodriguez, is he a true Yankee? Maybe some people would disagree, but he is a World Series champion. And after five, six years of turmoil, I think, in the eyes of many Yankee fans, he's finally earned his pinstripes because for Yankee fans, belonging equates to winning championships. And what about uh, the veteran pitcher, the left-hander Andy Pettit, with some big wins in the postseason? I mean, he wins clinching games in each round of this postseason. What a big game pitcher. He was. And you know, when he left the Yankees several years ago and went to Houston, I think a lot of people, a lot of us figured he would finish up there. The Astros went to their first World Series. Pettit helped get him there. I think people were maybe surprised would he ever come back here again. He's back here, had a real good season. Will he retire? I think there's already talk about that. If he does go out, a great career by Andy Pettit. And if you look, 18 postseason wins by far a major league record. If he retires now, really won't get much consideration for the Hall of Fame. I think he has about 219 wins. He really needs three, four more big seasons if he wants to get up in consideration for the Hall of Fame ballot. He finished the year healthy, unlike 2008, so I think it's going to be a little bit before he decides whether he wants to come back for 2010. Andy Pettit, part of that big four with Jeter and Pettit, Posada, and Mariano Rivera. Has there ever been a group like this, four players that has won five rings? Well, I don't know, four, but you go back to the Yankees of the 50s and the 60s. You had in 1962, Yogi Berra won his 10th ring. I think Whitey Ford was his seventh and Mickey Mantle was fifth. And 
one of the things Jeter was asked after the game was saying, hey, you're halfway to Yogi. Yogi had 10 rings. You have five. And Jeter said, yeah, well, Yogi didn't have playoffs. But certainly impressive for this era of baseball for having four guys with five rings. Oh, absolutely. Paul O'Neill, I talked to him before the game. He said the same thing. He said, I don't know if you'll ever have four constants like this in the era of free agencies, trade salaries. You know, the Yankees have stamped themselves the legacy. When you think of Andy Pettit holding the glove up to his face, he is the face of October. Derek Jeter jumping high after a last win. Mariano Rivera coming in to enter Sandman. Posada behind the plate. I mean, that is a real image, a real lasting image of this era in October and in November. And what about the Philadelphia Phillies? Uh, where do they go from here? Are they going to be a nationally power for two, three years to come? I would think, especially if the pitching solidifies, they don't have a whole lot of players who are going to be disappearing. I think Pedro Feliz is the only regular who's eligible to be a free agent. They could keep Pedro. They have Cliff Lee for an option but they could lose him after 2010. And then the big questions coming out of 2009 are what went wrong with Cole Hamels, MVP in 2008 of the World Series, really a big bust in 2009 in the postseason. So if they shore up the pitching, and there are pitchers out there they can shore up with, I think uh, the Phillies are in position to compete then dominate the Mets and the Dodgers and Cardinals for control of the National League. And finally, the question I want to ask you is about Joe Girard. Has he established himself as a major league winning manager? Well, I think he had established himself uh, with that with the Florida Marlins when he took a team of 22 rookies and kept it into contention until September. He left there after a rift with ownership, came to New York, and he really did what New York management wanted him to do after Joe Torre. The team was a lot harder working in spring training. He was a lot more buttoned down. He runs the operation with the punctuality of a German train schedule down to the minute. And he's really a detailed guy. Some people thought he went overboard with the printouts and the binders in the postseason and the matchups. But in the end, as a tabloid headline said today, as long as you're right, it's all justified.